Hi, my name is Aya, you're watching Aya Reads, and as of filming this, it's May 26th, and my goal is to binge the entire Legacy of the Gods before God of War comes out. So I actually already read God of Malice, I read it... Actually, let me grab that one. Okay, while editing this video, I realized I never finished the intro for this video. Basically, what I wanted to say was that I already read God of Malice, so I will not be talking about this book in this video. If you want to know more of my in-depth thoughts, check out uh, the first vlog I did for the year, which I'll leave linked for you. This was actually my first book of the year, so it definitely set a great tone for the year. So if you want to know my in-depth thoughts about this book, check out that vlog. I can tell you that it was five stars and I did really love it. And in this video, I will be reading these four books. So while I'm filming this, I actually read all of them. So... I'm not gonna blab on too much. I really hope you enjoyed this video. While filming this, God of War comes out tomorrow and I obviously will be vlogging it, just not in this vlog. On Sunday, I'm gonna upload my new releases vlog, which will include God of War. If I remember, I'll leave it linked if you're watching this after Sunday. And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me a knife emoji for all these crazy psychopaths that I'm reading about in this vlog. I really hope you enjoy it and let's cue to the vlog. I'm here to give you my review for God of Pain. So I actually already started this and finished it and I never did an update for it because I was struggling with it a little bit too much. So God of Pain is the second book in the Legacy of the God series. You follow Creighton and Annika. And in the first book, Annika was really intrigued by Creighton. She wanted to get his attention and he really wasn't giving her the attention. He is a very, very, very tortured hero with a very dark past. Something happened in his past that changed him irrevocably. So when he was three, something horrible happened. And because of that, both his parents died and he was adopted by the King family. So Aiden and Elsa King are his parents and Eli King is his brother. Annika is Jeremy's sister, so she's a mafia princess. Yes, she goes to the same school as Creighton and she's been intrigued by him. And in this book, he finally is intrigued by her as well and he becomes this very obsessive, possessive hero. So when I first finished it, I actually gave it 4.5 stars, but after sitting with it for a while, I end up giving it four stars, which is still a good rating. A four star means it's a book I really liked and a book that I would definitely recommend, but just comparing it to God of Malice, which I really, really love, I didn't love it quite as much. The reason being is I was struggling with it throughout the first half of this book. It wasn't until, uh, let me see. It wasn't until I got to page 256, which is over halfway through, that I really, really was intrigued. So basically the first 256 pages was a three star for me. And after that it was a five star. So at the end it's a four stars and that is a little bit generous. But since I did very much enjoy the last part so much, a four is definitely fitting. This book made me really, really interested in Creighton's parents' books because, I mean, even though I really loved God of Malice, I wasn't really chomping at the bits to, to read their parents' books. Whereas in this one, I was so intrigued by Aiden and Elsa, and I'm definitely gonna be reading their books as soon as I finish The Legacy of the Gods. Yeah, at the end, I really did enjoy this couple. I do believe that they'll stand the test of time, and I do really believe in their romance. Like I said, when I got to page 200 and... Um, 57, I could not stop reading. I just wanted to know what was going on and especially the plot really kept me intrigued and I just didn't want to do anything else but read this book. Whereas in the first half, it was very easy for me to put down. In fact, I did end up starting another book, which I rarely do simply because I wasn't really vibing with the first half. But yeah, at the end of the day, I did love Crane. I loved this tortured hero with the tragic past. I really loved the parents in this book. I love both her parents, seeing both her parents and his parents. And this made me very, very excited about both God of Wrath and God of Fury. Um, especially God of Fury is one that is that I'm very, very highly anticipating. Going back to the four star, like the first half, it took me a long time to believe in that romance and Annika kind of annoyed me. And I, I feel bad saying that because obviously there are girls like her and that's fine, except 
she felt very like she felt like a 12 year old to me sometimes and then the sex scenes made this a little bit uncomfortable for me i know glinden in god of malice is not that much older but she read a little bit older to me whereas annika reads a little bit younger than her age which like i said they have some very intense brutal sex scenes in here because he's a sadist so he enjoys inflicting pain and i i tend to like those books especially like for example in the bully that heroine was also read a little bit younger yet they had some very mature sex and it didn't bother me as much as in this book it just annika sometimes she didn't feel like a real character to me like she felt i don't know, i think some reviewer actually said she made her entire personality liking purple i agreed with that for that first portion of the book and i do have to say in the next part she does stand a little bit better on her own and she did feel a little bit more mature to me in the second half i understood why she loved him because it was set up pretty well that she liked him from the very beginning. I didn't understand how he loved her. Like, especially in the first book, like first half, I just didn't understand why he all of a sudden became so obsessed with her. I do have to say, at the end of the day, like I said, I do enjoy, I, I did believe in that romance. Maybe on reread, I will love them a little bit more, but for now it's a four stars. At the end of the day, I do love how they changed for each other, how they were willing to do anything for the other person. And I do enjoy her writing style. Like there are some beautiful quotes in here and the plot was very intriguing to me. Um, like at one point I'm like, how on earth are you gonna get these two together? Like, how is that possible? So she is a favorite author of mine. And like I said, she does set up the rest of the books very well, but I have a feeling this is gonna be my least favorite in the series. I, I don't know yet because I have not continued on yet. I still need to read another book for another vlog, but then after that, it's gonna be <laughs> Legacy of the Gods all the way because... I only have about two weeks before God of War comes out and I really want to read God of Wrath, God of Ruin and God of Fury before then. So yeah, but I guess for now, this is my ranking. Number two is God of Pain, which got four stars. And my favorite book so far is God of Malice, which got five stars. And I'm really enjoying this series and I'm very much looking forward to seeing what Jeremy is gonna bring. I did find him very intriguing in God of Pain. And Cecily is also a little bit of a mysterious character to me. Very much bad boy, good girl. And I don't know, I have heard some things that involve a gun in that book that I'm for some reason very intrigued by. So I guess you'll hear my thoughts in the next clip. So I'm on page 193 of God of Wrath. And I gotta say, I'm really enjoying it. I prefer this one already over God of Pain. Basically, this is the third book in the Legacy of the Gods and you follow Jeremy Volkov, who is Annika's brother from the second book. And you follow Cecily Knight. And once again, this is a romance between a royal university or royal elite university um, and a King's U College men, basically. So it is similar to God of Malice in that way. I mean, he's part of the mafia and he's like the leader of like the heathens, which is like the secret club for the King's U College. And Cecily, you've seen around in the first two books. Jeremy, you don't, you haven't really, I don't know. I felt like Jeremy from, to me, was a little bit of a character that I didn't really know a whole lot about even though he was Killian's friend and Annika's brother, obviously, but I, he was in the background, he was making moves, but we never really, like, I never really knew anything about him. So in this book, uh, Cecily is, has like the biggest crush on Landon, who is Glyndon's brother, who's also like a psychopath. He's, his book is gonna be next. Because she has such a big crush on him, she's basically willing to do anything he wants, and what he wants is create chaos. So he sends her to like the Heathen's initiation, the one where Glyndon was also a part of in the first book. When she's at the initiation, initiation, <laughs> initiation, a man in a orange mask grabs her and is like almost getting ready to kill her. And she's like, please fuck me. I don't want to die a virgin. And that is basically everything he needs to basically become intrigued by her. He realizes who she is and who she's probably been sent by. So he is kind of stalking her and trying to find out, like he wants to use her to get to Landon because they're basically like rivaling their um, heads of rivaling secret clubs. But he also realizes, so he starts stalking her, he hacks her phone and then he realizes that she has a primal play kink probably because she knows that Landon has one. So she knows that Landon frequents this certain club. So she decides to also join. 
and make the specifications for the guy she wants to basically chase her and fuck her to be the to be basically Landon, like his color eyes, his color hair, his exact height. But of course, when Jeremy stalks her and hacks her phone, he makes it so he's gonna be the one to do all those things to her. So they meet up and they do that primal kink. And then afterwards, she realizes who he is and they basically become a thing. So she is slowly realizing that it's not Landon that she wants. It is definitely Jeremy, but he still thinks that she still likes Jeremy. So he kind of punishes her in a way and he's also a psychopath like he doesn't care if he hurts her at all and she kind of kind of likes that too so like i said i'm really enjoying it i do feel like like this reminds me a little bit more of god of malice and god of pain did i just with god of pain like i said in the previous review i had some issues with the believability of the romance and the heroine was not really my favorite whereas i do believe like cecily is a heroine i relate to a little bit more i like that she is a little bit introverted i like that she just likes to read i like her quirky style and jeremy is just unhinged but like unhinged in the best way in my opinion like he doesn't give a fuck and yeah their sex scenes are very great like I do like reading the primal play kink I don't know why I do I just do I like how she questions herself that she think that she thinks there's something wrong with her but I do like how he basically takes and takes and takes I mean I, I wouldn't like that in real life obviously but I do like reading about it and I am interested it's like sometimes he softens for her and I do like those scenes so I am interested to see how their romance is going to develop so far, it is definitely just lust-filled, but you can see that in some ways they do care about each other. So right now, he actually... <laughs> I think the next scene that's gonna happen is gonna be the gun, like the infamous gun scene where he basically fucks her with his gun, which... Hello, unsanitary! <laughs> but I am interested to read it, so... Yeah! Um, like I said, so far I'm enjoying it, um, and I am... like. If it goes the way it has been going, it's gonna be my second favorite. So I guess I'll just update you once I finish, or if there's like something that I need to react to, um, then I'll also update you. So yeah, Jeremy and Cecily. Also, one thing I did wanna mention before I go, sometimes I have issues with books or series where the books take place around the same time, and the same thing is happening here. It's not bothering me too much because it seems like the plots are ultimately gonna be different, but Sometime when I'm reading this book, like for example, uh, the couple from the second book is not even together, at least from what I've read so far. So that is confusing to me. Like are Crane and Annika together or are they not? I do know that a lot, like most of the books take place around the same time, but it is a little bit confusing for me because obviously I'm reading them chronologically. So I like the way they were published. So obviously in my head, Annika and Creighton are already together. I do know that God of War takes place a little bit after the rest of the books, I think. So, but yeah, for now I am still like, the timeline is confusing me a little bit, like where we are at the time in the timeline. I would love if somebody made like a chart of like all the chapters you need to read to literally read it chronologically. I don't know if that already is a thing, but I mean, that person would get a medal. <laughs> Um, and maybe one day if I reread it and such a thing exists, I might read it in that order. Like you literally read all six books around the same time, but like read different chapters just to read it chronologically. I would be interested to see how that reading experience would go. I'm not even sure if that's even possible. But yeah, so far I'm enjoying this book and I'll update you once I want to tell you more. So I just finished... God of Wrath by Rena Kent, and I gave it five stars. I really, really enjoyed this book. In fact, when I just finished it, I was debating which one of these was my favorite because I gave this one five stars as well. I think this one I prefer a little bit over this one, mainly because I think I already said it in my update. I related to Cecily a little bit more because of her obsession with mangas and stuff like that. Obviously, I'm obsessed with books, so that is a similar type of thing to love. Also, I um, related to both characters. Both of them had mothers who were struggling with their mental health. That is something I very much relate to. So yeah, and I, I think I prefer Jeremy as a hero because Killian was like the definition of a psychopath. He reminded me of Carter in a lot of ways. There's just like something that is different about his brain. Jeremy, yes, he does, like, he makes decisions, or he seems like a psychopath on the surface, but really he's not. He's just very selective 
um, in what he likes or who he likes and who he's willing to protect. There are layers to him and the heroine is able to remove those layers. Whereas Killian, there's no layers about him. Like he is who he is and he's unapologetic about it. Jeremy's also unapologetic for how he is, but there is a little bit more to him that Cecily discovers. And I think I preferred that. Also, I enjoyed reading about their primal kink. Like I think she did a great job with that. And I was just thoroughly, thoroughly entertained while reading it. And what I did like about him is that he compromises a little bit. So yeah, there were some scenes in here that were a little bit uncomfortable, especially the gun scene. But I mean, that is why I read these books. Like I, I know that there are dark romances. I go into them knowing that these men are unhinged. So I, I, I like it when they are unhinged. To be honest, I didn't think this was gonna be my favorite because I know, well, I mean, I was debating because I know McKay recently read them and this was her favorite. Well, at least up, to, I don't think when she said that this was her favorite, she hadn't read God of Fury yet. But Jen over at the Brook Refuge, this is her least favorite. So it wasn't gonna be 100% sure that I was gonna love it, but it ended up being my favorite. I am really enjoying this series so far. Like I'm very much entertained. So far, I do prefer the um, King's U College men over the Royal Elite men, but we still need to read at least, well, two, like the next books are going to be primarily royal elite men. So I'm hopefully I will be swayed. I am looking forward to Landon's book and obviously God of Fury is a lot like is a fan favorite and then God of War I'm very excited about. But yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed this. I did like the mafia aspects in here as well because technically Killian in here is tied to the mafia, but he's not. I, I'm, I don't think his family is actually part of the mafia whereas uh, Jeremy is the heir to like a mafia empire. So I did enjoy it. I did enjoy Ilya in here, um, like his bodyguard. And I just, I really liked it very much so. So I guess this is my ranking so far. <laughs> my least favorite is God of Pain. I gave this four stars. Both the hero and the heroine were just not really my favorite. Then my second favorite is God of Malice, which is the first book. I gave this one five stars. And my favorite so far is God of Wrath which is the third book, and I gave this one five stars. The next one I'm gonna be reading is obviously gonna be God of Ruin, which is Landon's book, Landon and Mia. Um, I'm a little bit behind. Right now it is Wednesday, and I wanna finish this tomorrow for sure. I, I, I do think I still can because this is a little bit of a shorter book. It has 410 pages. Hopefully I can read a chunk of this today and tomorrow I have the day off so I have the whole day to read and I was planning on filming but I'm not going to be doing that anymore so I do have a lot of time to read tomorrow. I'm very excited about that and then hopefully I can finish God of Fury this weekend. I'm very excited about it but yeah I'm on the fence with Landon's book here. Actually a funny thing and I did not know this Cecily in here had a big crush on Landon in this book before she and Jeremy got together. So he's definitely <laughs> going into this. He's definitely a villain, which I mean, I guess all of them are villains, but no more so than Landon because he was definitely an antagonist in the first book and in the third book, obviously. And even like his friends don't really like him. So I am interested. We have seen some scenes in the first book and in the third book between him and his heroine, which is Mia, and I believe she is speechless. So yeah, very interested. So Mia is Nikolai's sister, which is funny because the next book is gonna be about Landon's brother and Mia's brother. So obviously this is gonna set up God of Fury well, I would assume. So... Yeah, I guess I'll just update you. Like I said, I'll update you once I'm halfway through. Okay, so I thought I'd film this update because I am getting ready to leave for a weekend trip to Leuven in Belgium. So I wanted to give you an update for God of Ruin before I leave because there is a chance that I'm going to be finishing it on the trip. I'm going to be with my friend the whole time, so I don't have a lot of opportunities to film probably, but I'm on page 214 and I am really enjoying it. I do have to say, I don't know if binging this series was a good idea. I know a lot of people have binged this series, but for me, I do have to say, reading them back to back to back, I do notice some glaring, glaringly obvious similarities. Like all these heroines are virgins. The heroes are similar in a lot of ways. So I do feel like every time 
something happens, I'm like, you know what, I've read that before in any of the other books. Having said all that, I am enjoying it. I do know for sure that even though this man here is very attractive and it is, this is the way I picture Landon, I know for sure this is not going to be my favorite in the series. It, and I'm, it's probably not going to be my least favorite, but it's going to be near the bottom. Because Landon, even though I do have to say Landon made me laugh a lot of times already. So that is enjoyable. Let me backtrack <laughs> and tell you what this is about. So you follow Landon and Mia and Landon is Glyndon's brother from the first book. And Mia is Nikolai's sister who's going to have the next book. And obviously Landon is also Brandon's brother who's also going to have the next book. I do have to say God of Fury is one I'm very excited about simply because it's so different from the rest. But this book, Landon did something to Nikolai in the last book. In the beginning of this book, Mia is getting revenge for what happened to her brother. And because of that, she's now on Landon's radar. So Landon ha is a, once, once again, a psychopath. He is very similar to Killian from the first book. It's not really because of traumas that he is the way he is. He, he was born that way. And he's really like unfeeling, uncaring. Like he just doesn't care about anybody but himself. He's very arrogant, very narcissistic, and obviously yeah, like a psychopath. He's never really cared about anything. And he's very sexually active and he doesn't really sleep with the same woman twice. But Mia, because like she doesn't really is not fawning over him the way a lot of other women are. She's get, caught his eye. You have seen an interaction between them in the first book, so she's speechless. But like I said, she just doesn't give a fuck. Like she will tell him to his face what she thinks about him. And since, once again, she doesn't, she's not fawning over him and she's giving him shit. He's very intrigued by her. He's also very, very smart. So like in the span of a night, he has learned ASL so they can communicate. Once again, like I said, she's a virgin. She doesn't tell him that. So their first interactions, their first like actual, like the first penetrative sex scene is also, that's when he realizes that she was a virgin. So that is different from the first book where Killian was partially interested because she was a virgin. Yeah, like I said, Landon made me laugh out loud a lot. <laughs> like the way, like his inner monologue, because he's so fucking arrogant, just make me chuckle a lot. I do have to say that. But as a character, like I don't think I can fall for a guy like him. Killian, I preferred a little bit more. Although I do have to say, I prefer Mia over Glyndon. So because of events that happen in the book before this one, she has made a deal with Jeremy, the hero from the last book, that she'll spy on Landon and report back. So that is happening, but also he is exploring like different, different several kings that she could be having. So they meet up at this abandoned house, once again, very similar to God of Wrath where he is introducing her to the, these different uh, kinks. So there is choking. There's a lot of choking in here. There is um, the primal play kink, which I love. And there's somnophilia in here, which for those of you who don't know, somnophilia is having sex while one of them is sleeping. And something has happened to her in the past when she was eight that she describes as somebody taking her voice. So some there's some childhood trauma here that made her speechless. So she can speak because Landon, when she's sleeping, he can hear her say different words. So it's definitely traumatic. The fact that she's speechless, it's not because of a um, like injury or something. So that is interesting. I am interested to see how she's going to tackle that. I haven't read a whole lot of speechless characters. Uh, the last one I read was one for the Mafia Romance Readathon, Broken Whispers. And that that heroine was speechless because like there was an injury to her throat that so she physically cannot speak. Also, like I said, I, like I already told you, I'm very excited about God of Fury. And while we, like God of Fury has been teased throughout all of the books, this um, I am very much looking for mentions of Brandon and Nikolai and their romance because already some things are set up because obviously Landon is Brandon's twin brother and Mia is Nikolai's 
sister and also Mia and Brandon are friends like we are getting closer to their romance and like I said I'm very much excited about that one this uh, book I believe is the shortest out of all of them and I know God of Fury is gonna be probably the longest oh, I'm not not sure the length of God of War obviously but so far God of Fury is the longest I still think I love this more than God of Pain but I don't think I love it more than God of Malice or God of Wrath mainly because of the hero, like I said. I don't know, something about Killian. I just preferred Killian's inner monologues as opposed to Landon's inner monologues. Also, we have seen Landon in the previous books and he's just been wreaking havoc. He's been the antagonist to almost every one of those people. Obviously with Killian, we, like, he's, he got the first book, so we never really got to see him in an end antagonistic role whereas Landon has been constantly being the antagonist in the first book in the second book well the second book a little bit less but definitely in the third book too obviously because Cecily had a crush on him and he used that to manipulate her so he already started off with me not really being a fan but I am coming around a little bit but I don't think this will yeah I, I know for sure this is not gonna usurp God of Wrath for me and probably not God of Malice but we'll see I am a little bit over halfway through and oh yeah also one of the re I keep like going back to back and forth between my thoughts and the synopsis one of the reasons why he's intrigued by Mia is because she's become his muse so he, like he can sculpt these beautiful sculptures like he's a prodigy <laughs> which it doesn't help his arrogance at all by the way but he had some issues sculpting recently and he never really had a muse he never really thought that muses are a real thing until he meets Mia and all of a sudden he's very creative again and she's basically become his muse. So basically what they're doing is they meet up at this abandoned place, they have sex and then he spends the rest of the night sculpting while she's either sleeping or in her garden. I guess those are my thoughts for now. And I think I'm just gonna update you once I finish. Also, what is fun about this model is that he represents both Landon and Brandon because they are identical twins. So yeah, um, oops, I guess you'll see me in the next clip with my final thoughts um, for this one. Okay, so I just finished God of Ruin and I think I'm gonna give it 3.5 stars, which makes it my least favorite in the series so far. I really thought that God of Pain was gonna be my least favorite, but I think this one ekes it out a little bit, even though the male cover is my favorite. Like I, this is a very, very, very attractive guy. I think in my update, I told you that I preferred this couple a little bit over God, the couple from God of Pain, which I still agree with. But the plot in God of Pain, especially like the second half of the book was very like was so intriguing to me that I think I prefer God of Pain over this one. This to me, like, I don't know. I think part of the reason I enjoyed this one a little bit less is because I'm binging them. Because this to me feels very similar to God of Malice and God of Wrath. Like it feels like a like those two books had a baby and God of Ruin came out. It just felt way too similar to other books in the series, which makes me like it a little bit less. Landon, I, I, he never really endeared me to him. And yes, he's a psychopath, but I've read other psychopath romances, like God of Malice, for example. And I was a little bit more on board with Killian in here than Landon in here. And Mia, even though I did love her in the beginning, towards the end of the book I was just a little bit ambivalent towards her like I wasn't it wasn't that she was annoying at all uh but I just was like I don't know like I was at, at the end I was just ready for this book to end whereas with God of Pain all I wanted to do was read this book and I just could not stop reading so therefore this is a 3.5 stars yeah like I said I don't I don't know if binging is the best way to go about this series, to be honest, since the same plot beats and the same, well, at least the same, especially the kinks are very similar in every book. The book I am ex excited about is God of Fury. I do think that book is different enough from the rest to make me love it. Obviously it's male male. It is, I don't know. I just heard so many good things about it already. And I'm just like very intrigued and their romance obviously has been set up very well from the beginning Whereas God like this book is not really that well set up And I do have to say this doesn't bode well for God of War in my opinion because so far I'm preferring the men from the King's U College over the men from the Royal Elite University So obviously I loved Killian. I love Killian's book and I loved Jeremy's book and obviously with God of War even though Bran is from the Royal Elite the 
more psychopath out of the two is from the King's U College, which is Nikolai, obviously. Yeah, I, I don't know if I have any other thoughts for this book, to be honest. I did enjoy the scenes we got with Landon, Brandon, and Glyndon. Like, I was intrigued with their family dynamics, and I was intrigued by Landon and how he viewed his siblings, and I do feel like we got a little bit more of an insight into his thought process. But like I said, it is similar. Like these two even have like this abandoned mansion that they go to, which is what happened in God of Wrath. Landon is very similar to Killian in God of Malice. It's just like too many things that were the same for me. And that's just the reason why I enjoyed this book a little bit less. That just made this book very easy for me to, to put down and a little bit harder for me to pick it back up again. But I do have to say while reading it, I was enjoying it, which is why this book still got 3.5 stars as opposed to a three star. And let's do the ranking for now. So in fourth place, the book I gave 3.5 stars is God of Ruin. Then in third place is God of Pain, which I gave four stars. Second place goes to God of Malice, which I gave five stars. And first place is still God of Wrath, which I gave five stars. Right now it's Monday, June 10th, and God of War comes out in three days. But <laughs> I still need to read this book. I haven't started yet, which this book is 500 pages. It, I believe it's the longest out of all of them so far. And also Not in Love by Ali Hazelwood comes out tomorrow that I also really want to read as soon as possible. So I'm not, I'm still on the fence with how I'm going to tackle this, but for sure I'm going to be starting this one today. Although I have a date in like an hour and a half, um, which is <laughs> a date from uh, like a dating website, which it's actually a website where, well, it's an app where you don't actually talk to each other before meeting. Like you, the first interaction is you meeting at this location that the app provides. It sounds fishy, but I have used it many, many a times and I do like this app. So I'm, I don't know, I'll tell you, I guess I'll give you an update about the date, I guess. Um, I don't usually talk about my dating life, but since I'm literally meeting this dude in an hour and a half, I figured let's talk about that. Let, let's uh, tell you that, I guess. I'm thinking, do I have anything else to say? Oh yeah, I do anticipate having a lot of time to read God of Fury in the next two days. So, I guess there is a possibility that I might finish it Wednesday and then I can definitely start um, God of War on Thursday when it comes out. And then I guess I'll read the Ali Hazelwood book after, I think. I don't know. We'll see, like I said. But there will be a vlog of me reading the Ali Hazelwood book and reading God of War, hopefully Sunday. So definitely check that out if you're interested in my thoughts on God of War, obviously non-spoilery. But yeah, I am so excited about God of Fury. Very excited. Hopefully it will be, hopefully my expectations are not too high and hopefully I'll love it just as much as God of War and God of Malice. So yeah, um, I guess I'll update you once I am a little bit of the ways through God of Fury. Okay, so I'm currently reading God of Fury and I'm on page... 197. I am really loving it. This has the potential to become my favorite in the series. So those of you who don't know, this is a male-male romance between Nico and Brandon, or Nikolai and Brandon. Once again, Nikolai is from the King's U College. He is Killian's cousin and Jeremy's best friend. And Brandon is Landon's twin brother and Glyndon's older brother. Like I said before, I'm pretty sure their book has been teased from the very beginning because yeah, even in God of Malice, like you see some scenes in here that you have seen in other books, just from other characters' perspectives. So like one of the first chapters in here, he's sitting on Nikolai's lap and there's actually a scene in God of Malice where Glyndon is looking at that scene thinking that she might recognize him, but it's not really clear. And then there's other scenes that we have seen from, like I said, other people's perspectives. So like I said, they have been teased very much from the very beginning. And I have been very much looking forward to that book because of the teasing, but also because a lot of people that I trust their opinions they have loved this book. So like I said, Brandon and Nico. Nico is very much intrigued by Brandon from the very beginning and he's relentless in pursuing him. And Nico is bi, he's always known that. Brandon thinks that he's straight and he has this on and off again girlfriend who's not like, not like, 
basically she people call her a gold digger basically he buys her things there's something and i already know what it is but there's something that has happened to brandon that very much affected his mental health and this boy this sweet boy he obviously has some big traumas and he his mental health is very much struggling he does some things that like he hurts himself it's very very sad in fact i just like he it just breaks my heart he breaks my heart so much i feel so so sorry for brandon we have seen it in god of ruin landon thinks that brandon is keeping a leash on himself and he just wants nico to get away from him because he's for like nico is burrowing inside of him forcing him to confront that maybe he's not so straight. And like I said, he's relentless in pursuing him. And eventually he breaks Brandon down and Brandon is slowly experimenting with Nico. So I, I have focused more, a little bit more on Brandon's demons. Nikolai has them too, but in a different way and they manifest in completely different ways. They find that both of their demons calm down a little bit when they are together and when they're doing stuff together. So that is an interesting dynamic. I have started this book in the morning and I had to work and I am already almost halfway through. I'm devouring this book. All I do is think about this book. And when I have even like a couple of minutes to read, I am reading it. That's like, I'm so, so very much into this book. Like I said, it has the potential to become one of my favorites. Yeah, I just, I love both characters. I think they're very interesting. They feel different from the other characters, probably because this is the only male-male romance, but not even that. I, I feel like, yes, both of them struggle with their demons, but neither of them are really psychopaths, whereas all the other books have had some psychopathy, definitely. Both characters are so very interesting. Nico is a very interesting character. I found, I've always found him interesting from the very beginning. Also, Nikolai is the younger one. They, um, he's 19. Brandon, Brandon is 23, but obviously Nikolai, who's very much the dominant one in their relationship. Brandon, once he finally comes to terms with that he might be attracted to Nikolai and that he does want to pursue things further, he wants Nikolai to promise him that uh, they'll keep it a secret. So there's obviously like a secret relationship in here. Um, and also what's interesting, and Brandon never really enjoyed sex. He always felt like he just like had to do it. Whereas obviously with Nico, he is enjoying it. So that's another plot line in here. Also, I do enjoy the little scenes we get with Landon. So obviously we do, we just got like the book before this one is Landon's book. So I don't know. I, I, I kind of enjoy that, their dynamics. I also... It's clear that Brandon really loves his brother and he thinks that Landon is incapable of love. But obviously I've read his book and I know that um, he does care about his siblings. So yeah, I'm just like thoroughly enjoying myself. I think this is a very good book. Some of the lines in here just <laughs> are so beautiful. And yeah, I think I can definitely finish this tomorrow, which is great because God of War comes out the day after tomorrow. I am interested to see what else is gonna happen. Um, obviously secrets are gonna get revealed because it's like I said I already know what happened in Brandon's past but so far it has not been mentioned at all so he still needs to come to terms with the fact that that happened and he like there has to be obviously a conversation between him and Nikolai and I do know that there is a scene where Landon is gonna get involved so I have been kind of spoiled about this book but that's okay also what I do have to say is I am, like I said, I love the scenes with Landon. What I also really love are the scenes with Killian. So there are some scenes we got that once again, we have already seen, but seeing them from both Brandon and Nico's perspective just makes me very happy. So yeah, I guess that's my update for now. If I have any other big thoughts, I'll let you know. And otherwise I'll just um, give you my final thoughts and finish this vlog. So this book made me cry. Bren made me fucking cry. I just read, without spoiling it, the bathtub scene. <sighs> Bren just deserves the world. I feel so, 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 so sorry for him. This deals with self-harm and Brandon is cutting himself. And I just read the scene where Nico found out and ugh, heartbreaking, heartbreaking. Oh my God.
that is all I came here to say. If you know, I don't, I rarely cry reading books for the first time. Usually when I reread a book, I will cry this. I'm not, obviously it's not full on crying, but it's definitely tears in my eyes. That rarely happens. And I just feel like my heart is breaking. I mean, it has been breaking from the very beginning, but oh, poor Brandon. Anyway, I'll just, I guess I'll talk to you later. So I just finished God of Fury. And just like I thought, this is my favorite so far in the series. It's a five star without a shadow of a doubt. I really, really loved it. In fact, this is one of the few books that have made me cry. Like Bren, Brandon just fucking broke my heart. Like I, he was just like such a tortured, tortured boy with heavy demons. And I think, I honestly thought that Rena Kent did a beautiful job with this book. I love these opposites attract and I loved how they both quieted down each other's demons. But also I love the fact that this was realistic. Sometimes with these books, especially the more unrealistic ones, they make it seem like love can conquer all and especially love can cure all mental health. And I do, even though everything that happened towards the end was heartbreaking, I do appreciate the fact that sometimes love is not everything. Sometimes you need help, like mental health help. And I did uh, like the fact that how that was portrayed here. One thing I didn't expect to love, but really did was Landon, the Landon scenes we got in here. Obviously, uh, God of Ruin, which actually, <laughs> this is actually Nico and Bran together. Mm. Anyway, moving on. I obviously, uh, God of Ruin was my least favorite book. And I do maybe on reread, I'll appreciate this book a little bit more. But I do have to say, I did like the scenes of Bran and Len we got in this book. Once they finally have an honest to God conversation. And once we finally see the scenes from Brandon's perspective, I did appreciate Len a little bit more. And I did really like, as much as I love Nico and all the Nico and Bran scenes in here, I also really loved the few scenes we got with Len and Bran. Those were just really heartwarming to me. I knew this was gonna be one of my favorite books. I already knew, I already had a feeling because a lot of people seemed to love it and I was no exception. I really loved it. Yeah, I just, I really loved, like with some of the books, I was like, okay, I prefer one character over the other. With this one, I really loved both of them for different reasons. Like I loved Nico, I loved his combination of violence, but also, the golden retriever energy. I love that they were grump sunshine and Brandon. Like I just, I loved really getting to know Brandon and slowly got to know him with Nico. Obviously he's been around, but since he's been caging himself so much, we never really knew the real brand. And I just love how when he was with Nico, he became his real self. And I just really loved it. This book, uh, I told you guys, when I read God of Pain, I was really interested to read Aiden and Elsa's story. This book made me really interested to read Levi and Astrid's story, which is Cruel King. I am so excited about, about that. I am very much <laughs> interested to read all of Rena Kent's backlist because once again, in this book, some beautiful, beautiful quotes. I just really love that relationship. It is difficult obviously to see them having to hide it because of Bran, but I did love Nico putting his foot down and pushing back whenever he felt like that was necessary. And I did appreciate that. And I did feel like Bran really needed that. And I also love, lo well loved is a pretty harsh word, but I did, I was, okay. So basically Nico was constantly pushing Bran and that is something that Lan wanted to do, but his father constantly told him, you know, leave him be and just kind of take the peaceful approach. And I, it was interesting to see that ultimately the peaceful approach did not work because for eight years he was hurting himself silently. And you know, I am the type of person, I am very um, non-confrontational. So I would, th there is definitely a scenario where I would, if I was a parent and my child was obviously suffering, I would take, Levi's approach and it was interesting to see in here that maybe in some cases you do need to push because maybe they need that. I just, I thought, like I said, it was beautiful. I don't think I can say anything that hasn't already been said about this particular book. It's definitely one of my favorites I read this year. I really loved it. I really hope Rena Kent will do more MM in the future. This was her first, but I thought it was 
done perfectly. So for the final rating, and definitely check out my, the vlog I'm gonna be doing for God of War to see my ultimate rating. So obviously God of Fury is my favorite. So this is the final rating. In number five, my least favorite book is the fourth book, which is God of Ruin. I gave this book 3.5 stars. Then number four is God of Pain, which is the second book, and I gave it four stars. God of Malice, which is the first book, is in third place, and I gave it five stars. God of Wrath, the third book, is in second place, and I also gave that book five stars. And then my favorite is the fifth book, which is God of Fury, which I also gave five stars. And this series actually has a pretty high average rating for me. So far, the average rating is a 4.5 stars. Three out of the five got a five star from me, and then one got a four star, which is a book I would recommend over and over again. And I, I honestly think God of Ruin would be a book I would also still recommend, even though it's a 3.5 stars. Yeah, anyway, I really enjoyed my time reading this series. I do have to say, if you're gonna be reading this series, I would suggest not binging them back to back. Uh, because a lot of the books are a little bit similar, especially in the kink department and some of the character department. Like I said, for example, Landon, Landon's book was very similar to these two books. So I would say like read them, but like intersperse a couple of books in between them. Like I think you would be fine if you like read one book and then two others and then went back to it. And also the reason why also is because they do take place around a similar time. So like I said earlier in this vlog, if somebody would make like a big giant document saying, okay, read chapter one of God of Malice, then read chapter one of God of Wrath, like stuff like that, like you could read the entire series, but read different chapters so that you can read it actually chronologically that would be a fantastic way to read this series. But I don't know if such a thing exists. I really love doing this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it too. And I now need to edit this because I want to upload it today. So hopefully I can do that. So yeah, I really want to thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Definitely let me know by leaving a like if you did. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.